Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hi. We're live now, by the way. Live na tayo. So, actually, I've been getting some inv uh, na to, requests to join. So, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell all the members, uh, hello, good evening, uh, Philippine Astronomy Forum. Uh, gandang gabi sa inyong lahat. And uh, uh, before we allow other people to join in a discussion, uh, ano no? Uh, kami muna ng ating, uh, hindi na siya mystery ngayon, nandito na siya eh, yung ating mystery guest. Uh, kami muna yung magdi-discuss nitong topic. And if you may have any questions or was this uh, comments, just ano no, uh, try to uh, uh, post them as comments in the uh, comment section of this. Uh, kasi diba, ano na, ano siya, uh, it's now a post there in the Philippine Astronomy Forum so you can make like comments, you can just write. It has a comment, and we will monitor for like uh, your questions or, or comments. Pero later, mamaya, we will give you the opportunity if you want to chime in, if you want to, uh, ano to, to join the discussion, lalo na kung very interested kayo, and para na, na ano, na, ano to? Na spur yung, ano, enthusiasm you about the topic, kasi very, ano eh, very interesting yung topic natin, and very capable yung ating uh, guest ngayon on the topic. Okay. So without further ado, introduce ko na sa inyo yung ating uh, guest speaker. No? Our guest speaker is none other than si Timothy James Dimakali. Uh, good evening, James. Good evening. Uh, TJ, good evening. TJ nga pala, TJ. Can I call you TJ, you by the way? No, okay. sure. No problem. TJ, yeah. okay. So si TJ, uh, he, he is of course uh, a Filipino. <laughs> he comes from <laughs> our, our country. <laughs> okay. So uh, he grew up in Manila, no? And then um, he likes us, uh, just like me. Although I'm not really a die-hard fan of comic books, pero he likes us, ano? Uh, particularly vintage comics, no? And also classic sci-fi. Ay nako, ako lalo na ako. I'm really like into classic sci-fi, which instilled his lifelong love for literature and science, no? He is a graduate of uh, Bachelor of Arts in English in the University of the Philippines. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just like me, ako din, ano ako eh, very, ano to, uh, ang dami kong na-jump ng mga professions, no, in my, I'm also an AB English grad kasi. Kaya kung ano na rin, uh, ano to, uh, uh, ano to, mga jobs that I uh, got into. It's surprisingly into. useful. Yeah, exactly, exactly, no. Uh, uh, at one point in time, he was the financial news info editor to the cultural, uh, to, uh, and he was a cultural commission speech writer and a copywriter. And eventually, he landed uh, a job as a science and technology editor at the GMA Network. No? I think during the time that we uh, got to know each other, you were still with GMA, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Around that time. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. So, so GMA, that is TJ. Uh, and, you know, TJ is really enthusiastic about his work, his passion. He's, very, he's a very passionate guy. Kasi we've been uh, involved in, in earlier na mga, ano, no, mga discussions then and mga puzzles or ano ba yung pinanggagawa natin yung mga we were trying to do ano to parang puzzle solving online no um, his passion talagang really uh, drove him to to excellence and thus he earned some accolades along the way including the Philippine government's uh, Gawad Scriba award for science communicator so science communicator po si TJ no he is also an alumnus of the Asia Journalism Fellowship uh, the Netherlands Fellowship Program, CERN School Philippines, the Siliman University National Writers Workshop, and the Iligan National Writers Workshop. So talagang writer si TJ. Talagang ano siya, writer at heart. In fact, diba, TJ, you write stories, right? You, mainly kasi yep. science fiction, so you also write science fiction stories. Yes, and yes. baka mamaya, pwede nating uh, ipasilip sa iba yung example ng uh, one of your works, diba? Mm -hmm. Na ngayon pala, sasabihin ko na talagang nabitin ako. <laughs> <laughs> Medyo nabitin ako dun ah. Pero ano eh, pero yun daw ang maganda kasi kung meron kang isang work of literature tapos nabitin yung, yung audience mo, it means you're, you, you've started something really good and they want more. Diba? So magandang ano yun, magandang sign yun. So his science fiction stories uh, blends uh, Philippine history and mythology and has appeared in local and foreign anthologies. Even in... Ano no? Parang may Eastern European connection ka dati, di ba? Was, yes, was yes. it you? Oh, yung sa, yes. Was it Polish? Sa, yes. Or, uh, with the, the former ambassador of... Uh, no, not, not Poland. Sa ano? 
si, si, si Sir Haroslav Osla si uh, so so your 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 one of your works was translated in 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 Polish or was it uh, some other yeah, ano, in Czech ah in Czech oh in the Czech yes, Republic sir. wow nice and eto magi ma, matatay in natin to our discussion later pero TJ had the great opportunity to study at the prestigious MIT, not the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, as a Fulbright Scholar. Sabi nga niya, just like, uh, you know, the actor Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> Pero ano lang, with the, with the ano, hindi lang siya not, ano, not, muscle man. Not yeah, <laughs> Not as buff as uh, Dolph Lundgren. No? Kasi nakakagulat din yun. In fact, it was only recently that I realized na meron palang master's or was it a doctorate in 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 chemical engineering ba yun? or in in chemistry si Dolph Lundgren, si Dolph Lundgren. I, yeah masters yata i think ayun ko yeah. kung saan niya ako in chemical engineering right no oh. wow mm -mm. it means he can make rocket fuel no Dolph oh. Lundgren making rocket fuel making rocket fuel and uh, fly the damn rocket <laughs> <laughs> galing no okay so since 2020 uh, TJ has been a communications consultant for the Probe Media Foundation and the uh, department of science uh, Science and Technology uh, with SEI, no? the Science uh, Education, Education Institute. Institute. Yeah. yeah, okay. Is it still headed by uh, uh, Dr. Bio? Si Dr. Bio pa yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. E e our viewers, uh, you know Dr. Bio, right? Because she, she, her name is on one of the asteroids in the asteroid belt. Uh, if you don't know the story about that, we will tackle that at a later time. Because ito mga ast astronomy buffs yung NASA group. Pero yeah, Dr. Bio uh, is is known for that, diba? For for like na, yung yung name niya is one of the asteroids. So uh, and uh, the Philippine National Academy of Science and Technology, which eto nga yung ginagawa mo ngayon, no? You're involved in this parang long term na project with them, no? You're the, the chief Academy. editor, yeah, yeah the, the National, National Academy of Science, Science and Techno Te Science and Technology, Foresight Two Fifty which is an ambitious 30-year project of science and technology trends in the Philippines. Ang, ang, ano, no? Parang, ang exciting. It sounds exciting what you're doing it is, there. It is. Okay. A lot of it is technical, of course, but yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. He also supports STEM education through his regular contributions to Bato Balani, you know, Bato Balani magazine and the Asia, Asian Scientist magazine. So welcome, TJ. Hello. Welcome to our... Ano Thanks to? for having Chik me. Yeah, Chika Chika. No? Uh, sabi ko nga, ang title ng ating uh, ano ngayon, uh, live session is ano to? Space Navigation. Mali nga eh. Da ang na ano ko eh, na parang na, na mental block ako kanina. May hinahanap akong word na parang mas, ano to, mas uh, captivating eh. Ang tinitle ko na lang tuloy, Space Navigation at iba pa. Pero yung gusto ko talagang title, ibahin ko na lang ngayon on the fly is Celestial Navigation on the fly. I mean, on the fly at iba pa. Okay. Uh -oh. So yon. Kasi yun nga, medyo hodgepodge yung topic natin ngayon. Pero kasi ganito, the reason why I thought about having this discussion is, ano eh, dito sa group, may iba ring mga groups na share ng mga ganitong talks. And recently, napansin ko, merong isang astronomy group, the Bedan Young Astronomer Society, na they made this feature about the Apollo program. And naisip ko, bakit kaya? Kasi yun pala, ano nga, 50th anniversary pala ng Apollo 15 flight, no? Uh, going to the moon. So, ano to, um, naisipan ko na, why not uh, talk about uh, ano to, yung how they actually went to the moon, yung how, they, how did they actually manage to get there, kasi it involves navigation. And biglang pumasok sa isip ko rin, uh, being a science fiction uh, fan, uh, may na-encounter kasi akong series of books when I was young. Uh, I think we, I, I told you about that before no, in some of our discussions. There's this book called Rip Foster Rides the Great Planet. It was written in the 1950s. I can't recall the author right now. Pero nagulat ako eh kasi nakakatawa. It, it was written in the 1950s, right? So katatapos lang ng World War II. And I think the author had some experience in the U.S. Navy kasi. So naalala niya yata na yung magagaling na seamen na nag operate ng mga ships ay Filipino. So when he wrote that story about a rocket going into space, yung, ano, yung mga crewmen... One of them was Filipino, no? As early as that, 1950s, may may nagsulat na ng ano, ng isang although the the author was of course uh, a Caucasian, pero yung isang major character in the story was Filipino. 
So naalala ko yun, sabi ko, wow. And he was like a seaman, no? navigating through space. So sabi ko, maganda ito na ano, gawing parang point of discussion. And biglang pumasok ka sa isip ko na, uy, tama, kasi we have been talking about this. I mean, in our previous discussions before, you were like mentioning about this. And ano po, uh, may common parang milieu of interest kami ni TJ kasi we're both fans of the Dune Saga. Diba? Ni Frank <laughs> Herbert. Oo. In fact, he's, I, I believe he's much, much, much more, in many degrees, a, a bigger fan of Dune than me. Kasi ako talaga, <laughs> oh, hindi, I will tell you why, TJ. Baka ngayon ko lang kasi mara-relate sa'yo why. Kasi I got introduced to Dune through the David Lynch movie. No? Meaning, I was aware that there was a book. Pero during the time siguro na yon, I was into other uh, fic- works of fiction, usually fantasy. I've been reading Tolkien a lot, pati na uh, C.S. Lewis. No? So yung Dune Saga, alam ko na may Dune Saga, pero I, I, kasi ganito, actually, parang ibiblame ko partly on my father. Eh. Kasi when, when the Dune trailer was playing on TV, I remember we were in Los Baños, Laguna at the time, eh, as the Dune play, uh, trailer was playing on TV, sabi ko, ah, tay, ano yan? Sabi niya, ah, parang Star Wars. <laughs> yung sabi niya. Kaya nga parang biglang, ano, hindi ko tuloy na-appreciate that much. Kasi parang we nave off lang yan. Ay, parang Star Wars lang yan. Pero imagine, no, yung Dune kasi was a novel written in the 1960s. It actually like came before, right? It came before Star Wars. In uh, fact, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's actually a controversy na it was, uh, it, it was a big inspiration for George Lucas. Yeah, actually. diba? Baka, baka Dune nga niya. Kasi look, it, uh, Star Wars starts in a desert planet, Tatooine. Diba? Parang mga ganun, maraming parallel. Pero nagdadigress na ako. So uh, let's keep this in focus. So yun, um, yun ang naisipan namin. No? And that's why we, we've come up with this uh, talk today. And eto nga, I'll just give you a basic rundown on the, what we're going to talk about. So first, we're going to talk about space navigation, nga, celestial navigation in, in the real world. Ang tie-in natin dito is the fact that it's the 15th, 15th, uh, 50th anniversary of the Apollo 15 uh, program. Tapos, we're going to link that with uh, how, do, how did they depict navigating through space in sci-fi. Kasi syempre, prior to, ano, prior to, ano to, to the actual going to places like the moon or other parts of the solar system, may works na eh, di ba? Of sci-fi that claim to travel through these interstellar, or I mean interplanetary locations, may inter- interstellar pa nga eh. Pero di ba, as early as Jules Verne, Diba Jules Verne wrote the very first story of going to the moon, diba? Mm-hmm. Uh, y- yung From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne. So tapos, um, since we're going to talk about sci-fi, yun, uh, maybe we can, ano, TJ, you and I can jump a little into, ano, para patikim natin sa mga viewers yung about Dune, sure. the Dune saga, no? And then finally, TJ will share with us his own experience especially his, his experience during the time he was writing his thesis, no? Kasi it, it had some connect with the concept of us, no? Filipinos, as, as wanderers and explorers navigating, not necessarily through space pa, kasi ano, dyan na nga siguro in the future patutunguhan, pero looking back into the past and our, and our capacity as a people, as a culture, to actually, you know, try and navigate our environs, di ba? So we will we will tackle that towards the later part of the talk. So okay, so pa natay siguro magsimula. We're going to first uh, talk about the Apollo 15 flight. Did did you know na actually yung Apollo 15 it was their seventh trip to the moon, no? It was the seventh trip. So meaning yung iba kasi talaga when you talk about Apollo, yung iniisip lang agad si Neil Armstrong. Right. No? right. Pe- people don't even realize that there have been like 12 people who actually walked on the moon. And more than 24 yata have been like around the moon. Yung pwedeng bumisita. And it was the seventh trip. So talagang, you know, people were wondering, how did they actually do that? No, Kasi, I mean, it's easy to think of like a map. I mean, if you want to travel on the surface of the earth, you have like a map. Para lang siyang Cartesian plane, di ba? You have an X and Y axis and you move in two dimensions. But what about space? Parang ang hirap isipin, no? Kasi you have to move in three dimensions, eh. So para nakakalito. So, uh... I showed you TJ, diba? And in fact, I'm going to show to the, ano, uh, to the viewers right now. I'm going to show you guys a link. I'm going to activate my share screen. And uh, I hope lalabas dito, no? Uh, share. Teka. Nasa na yan? Uh, Try to find this documentary, guys. 
Uh, ay hindi, na-link ko nga pala dito in the group. I actually linked it earlier, mga an hour ago or two hours ago. I showed the, the members the link. Panoorin nyo to kasi it's really, really, ano, no, very informative siya on how the Apollo program tried to develop a system to reach the moon, di ba? So, it so happens na one of the methods that they wanted to implement, in fact, one of the very first contracts that was awarded by NASA, uh, usually, in-expect natin, uh, NASA will award it to a company like, like a, uh, ano to, engineering company, ganun. pero nakakagulat, no? They awarded it to a university, no? And this university was none other than the MIT, di ba? So, yeah, so... Uh, TJ, when you were watching that uh, ano to, segment na nalaman mo na the, the way to reach the moon pala was in the hands of MIT, what, how, what did you feel? Ano yung reaction mo? Well, first of all, I have to say, ano yun, parang nakakalula on a lot yeah. of levels. No? Uh, but the, I think the one that hits closest to home was ano yun, uh, to have actually walked the corridors and and gone to places where these these great yeah. people have been yung exactly. dyan, yung pinakita mo kanina uh, uh, yung when you showed the the, vid, the youtube earlier yeah. right uh, yeah. th that still that particular still yeah if where, i flash ko ulit yan if i flash ko ulit siya yeah sure sure sige ito that, that particular yeah. place i've i've gone through that 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 where they're standing right there i've been there dozens of times it's a, it's it's uh, one of the main parts of the campus, so you really yeah. can't not see that place. <laughs> so, para alam mo yung parang 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 nakakalula at nakakamangha at yeah. very humbling. You know, when growing up, you hear so. I mean, you know, growing up, you 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 read about going to to the moon. You read about yeah. all of these great achievements, di ba? Yes, yes. And then. When you see something like this, when you see when you see these people, these personages who are tied to this discovery, tapos na realize mo, wait, I I've been there, I've actually seen these stones, I've actually stood wow. there at dun pasla, na parang wow na ako mga talaga. Hmm. Pero uh, in my case, I, naman, alam mo in my case na kaka ingit, <laughs> kaka ingit that you actually like, pagkasi parang kung ano yan iniisip ko, if one day I I I get the opportunity to travel the world, parang yan yung mga pilgrimage ko, no, yung mga places like that where where stuff was like uh, ano to yung parang ideas were born or like inventions were created parang place of pilgrimage talaga to people who love you know science and right, how right. these things ano okay. the, go on, the, amazing go on. Thing, the amazing thing about MIT and which is why it's perhaps not surprising na ano na sila yung kinuha to devise the ano, the, ano, the the navigation system was yeah. because it really is a geeky university it has always <laughs> had this the, it, it, geek central siya talaga mm -hmm. uh, and I really felt like I was a kid in a candy store when I was there. No? But yeah. one of the things kasi, that they foster really is this, ano, is this uh, culture of, ano, of experimentation and innovation. Yeah. Uh, and to the people who have, to both, to the, to the audience who both have watched and are about to watch this documentary, you know, um, one, of the, one of the interview is there, sabi nga niya, parang, uh, the Pentagon just approached them. The government just approached them. We need a computer that will fit on a rocket, and then that's it. No, so <laughs> problem. Yeah, yeah. how, how, uh, how are we going to do this? And and uh, that's an interesting point because a lot of the problems that that MIT, because of course it's an engineering school, no, faces are like that. Huh? Kailangan natin ng ganito. Kailangan ganito. Like wait, we don't have the technology. <laughs> this technology does not exist yet. Yeah, how are we exactly. going to do it? So. This, of course, can only happen when you have a culture that a, 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 a campus culture that is really uh, dynamic and curious and 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 very experimentative. Uh, so, I, I, having seen that, uh, of course, kasi ako, I have to admit my limitations. I. I I I I'm not that well versed into the technicalities and into the math. Yeah. To say nothing of the math involved, you know. Yeah. So I can only tayo. look at it from a form. <laughs> <laughs> Pero sobrang nakakatawa na yun, you have these entire labs where people can sit down and and churn things out and and develop them, you know. And it's something yeah. that we hope eventually will come here, oh, that we will have for ourselves. Oh. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, you mentioned kasi about. Uh, 
all these talents no coming together and working on this problem. But uh, if you may have noticed, no, as the as the documentary went on, the, it could also be a source of problems, diba? Yung I mean, kasi yung academe, the way it works nga kasi na you get you, you you solicit ideas into the table and try to to figure things out, and you do it in a democratic way, kasi academe nga eh, parang everybody has a say, everybody can like do this or that. Pero kasi if you have a deadline, <laughs> in the case oh, of that, diba? Uh, send men to the moon before the end of the decade. Yun talaga yung parang paulit-ulit na words. Yung words kasi yun ni John F. Kennedy, di ba? Right, right. Oh, uh, oh. To the moon before the end of the decade. So talagang under pressure sila, pero nakakatawa, no? Under pressure sila, pero they were like, they actually had problems, di ba? Parang they got delayed so much. Kasi siguro nga yun, yung culture din ng kanilang, ano, ng setup nila that is academic. Ano eh, they, they really like have to like listen or parang hear out these other ideas. Pero yun nga, parang may somewhere along the, ano, hindi ko na isuspoiler nga din for others, yung documentary. Pero at some point along that, may nag-step in, di ba? Yung, yung NASA sent a troubleshooter in order to like, you know, uh, parang medyo i... Hindi naman siguro military na style. Yung tipong talagang parang to push them on na talagang to come up with, with the system. Kasi I think kung hindi nagawa yun, talagang it would, would have been problematic. Hindi talaga na, na develop. Yun pa naman yung parang central core. You can build the rocket, fine. You can build like the, the fuel. I mean, you can develop the fuel. You can train the astronauts. Pero unless you find a way to navigate, to actually go there, paano yun? Parang talagang sila yung naging central, ano talaga eh, yung uh, ano to? Yung parang sila yung uh, nucleus ng Apollo project eh. And eventually, uh, if people may not know, eto spoiler na rin to, hindi naging central tuloy yung yung really ingenious device na yon, which is the INS, the Inertial Navigation System. Ako nga din eh, hindi ko na-realize yun na tama, no? hindi naman pala siya 100% nagamit like an, as an independent uh, uh, piece of equipment. Kasi yung final solution is relying on on transmissions, yung radio transmissions yung ginamit nilang guidance to the moon. Pero may ano pa rin siya, may role, backup. As a backup means to, to ano, to, kasi pwedeng maputo lang communications eh. One example is, if you go to the other side of the moon, wala nang line of sight with the earth. So in order for the na- astronauts to know where they are, yun, pwede na lang i-turn on yung INS and even a sextant. And here is the connect with astronomy. Kasi syempre, if you don't know anything about the stars in the night sky, you can't use a sextant, di ba? So talagang nag, nag ano rin. Ito yung mga few moments wherein um, an astronomer becomes, in a way, I mean, a, an astronaut becomes an astronomer. Kasi alam mo, TJ, di ba common yan, napapansin mo din dito minsan na parang, uy, may astronomy group. Uh, may mga astronauts ba dyan? Yung tipong meron pa general confusion eh na when you talk astronomy, akala astronauts agad or parang spacecraft. When in fact, it is only in very few circumstances na parang uh, one becomes both. Yan, ito yung example. And one great example is si, si Jim Lovell, si James Lovell, yung isang astronaut ng NASA. Nag-study daw talaga siya ng star charts, no? Parang he became well-versed in like constellations, in where the major stars are, kasi it was his job. Is and okay. Yeah. Yes, again. And that's exactly. Oh, okay. I, I please finish off with James Lovell because I would like to jump off of that. Yes. Yeah. Kasi ganun eh. In fact, I was really curious how he did that. Kasi I also read one of his books. Yung his book turned into that movie. Eh. Uh, yung kanyang book is entitled Lost Moon. And you know why it's entitled Lost Moon? Kasi he was the commander of the Apollo 13 flight, the famous flight that failed. Di ba yung sumis sumabog? Kaya hindi sila nakaland sa moon. So, talagang totoo, he was the most experienced sextant user in space. <laughs> Kasi, he was the one in Apollo 8, he operated the sextant. Tapos, bumalik ulit sila sa moon, ginamit niya ulit yung sextant. So, he was really, really like, really good at that. Sige, ikaw. I, 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 I was, sorry, I was excited to, ano, to jump off this because I want, that's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. No? So, uh, to you, people who know James Lovell and the guys who are watching now they can research him and you know, uh, just to put uh, just to put this into context you know, his knowledge of astronomy 
and his knowledge of the use of navigation of astro navigation specifically was essential kaya siya naging yeah. leader diba now yeah. take now imagine this and this might this might surprise the people watching did you okay. know that i know it was a requirement for navigators uh, the polynesian navigators filipinos ancestors had to na had to have similar knowledge not written down without instruments memorized wow so yung yung level ng yung level ng intelligence okay. ni Lovell isipin mo common place yun among our ancestors yeah. uh, let me let me jump off a bit tangential no? so one of my key interests is ano uh, is uh, ethnoastronomy and then uh, and indigenous and, and indigenous navigation practices no? okay uh, if we you can look at this online ano yung yung the uh, the austronesians the austronesians uh around a thousand years ago they came through from in from from taiwan through to the philippines and then went as far uh, as far east as uh oh, sorry, tama, as far east as uh rapa nui easter island which is almost yeah. america already and as far west as madagascar which is off the tip of of in uh, of africa. india diba? sorry but the thing was uh in the, so if the guys i'm sure the audience is familiar with moana diba? and they have and we have this this great awe of 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 these of these islanders na they they have this uh, this navigational uh tips and tools diba? for themselves but yeah. what people don't realize and what i want the audience to know and hope to take heart is that they were filipino first all yeah. of all the genetic evidence the genetic evidence the linguistic evidence all points to the philippines having been a jump off point for all of these navigators any all the in all the, everything that they learned as navigators came from their from from ancient filipinos a long time ago how a thousand years ago um, I, i know you're about to say something i'll stop there but let me just say going back to lovell you know, uh i talked to uh, an expert recently who uh who studied ano uh, yung navigational techniques ng ano ng polynesians diba okay uh so as you said the lovell looked through star charts and memorized them imagine a navig the navigators uh an actual interview with uh si Pierre Lug yat yung pangalan ay forgot his first name na one of the last known uh, navigators no dito sa uh, sa Polynesia okay part of your training you had to train from the age of five, and you did not become a, a navigator until you were in your 20s it took uh, over a decade of training because wow. you had to memorize the movements of of hundreds of stars in the sky and have it memorized and know how these patterns change as you were moving across latitudes so they had all of this in their heads kung si so just just to finish what i was about to say no to put lovell into context and of course not to diminish him his yeah of course his role in the program but imagine this kind of knowledge it was commonplace and memorized by our ancestors all the time it was part of their everyday knowledge so that's something that we can take with us that we can be very proud of so it's no surprise that filipinos are an are great navigators we have we come from a rich uh, uh histor- yeah. history of that yeah because in, in in my view then i think w- if we were to talk about modern day and you know, uh methods of learning uh kaya din naman si James Lovell was able to like do that in a short span of time kasi medyo nag-evolve na rin yung mga teaching methods and the way we accumulate the knowledge no uh, siguro during the time uh, binigyan siya ng whatever star charts he, uh, were available uh, of course during that time wala pang computer so he couldn't have just googled it or used Google ano to, Google Sky talagang nag-aral siya he got star charts and everything but still that is a far cry compared to how our, our ancestors probably did it. Kaya nga, it took them a while because they would probably like lie on the sand on a starry night and talagang they would go over the stars directly. Talagang ano, yung kung saan pa, hands, <laughs> hindi hands-on kasi hindi naman nila mahawakan yung stars. <laughs> Pero yung talagang, ano to, uh, ano to? On the job training eh, in a way eh, di ba? Kasi nandiyan ka eh, nakaharap mo yung night sky. Right, and right. kaya nga, it takes years kasi you cannot... Unlike if you have like a phone app where you have Google Sky Map where you can do a forward in time and a rewind in time. 
if you want to show a five-year-old kid the next season, you literally have to wait a few months to okay. see to look to okay. show them the other seasons. Kaya talagang ano eh, it's not again to diminish then yung capability ng other at at ating ancestors. Pero kasi nga they were not equipped with the necessary uh, ano to. Pero still grabe yon. I mean trying to memorize all that. Talagang it's still a feat. I mean imagine, imagine kung may ganung oh. yeah, kung may ganung ability lang yung yung like the ano the the modern day astronauts, di ba? Or whoever is assigned to, for instance, uh, alam mo ba may, may funny incident nga na nangyari recently on the ISS na parang connected din away no, to navigation kasi may bagong, ano, actually it was old new. May isang module na ikinabit sa ISS, yung Nauka, Russian module. Now, this module has been sitting around in one of their, ano, in Star City, in one of their warehouses for over, siguro more than eight years na yun eh na hindi maka-take off kasi parang may problema, lack of funding, ganon. But finally, it got attached to the ISS. And you know what? Just a few minutes after it got attached, did you hear that? May no, nangyari on board. It suddenly, autonomously, parang activated thrusters. So the ISS actually tumbled. Parang 45 degrees ata out of alignment. So, inisip ko, Okay, so it was misaligned, so they had to align it again. Then, uh, yun, yung sudden realization ko, they had to have reference points, di ba? So how did they do that? Siguro inisip ko, hindi naman siguro by a sextant. Although baka may backup sextant pa rin sa ISS, pero ngayon, with, with ano, GPS and whatever you know, modern tools we have, baka mas madali tuloy mag-realign ng whatever orientation they want the ISS to be in. Pero bigla lang pumasok sa utak ko, eh, na the astronauts now, are so ano eh uh, ano to uh, privileged yung parang ano uh, i mean uh, they they're at an advantage kasi hindi na kailangan ng ano eh mental capacity to do it kasi ang dami ng aids napakarami na nilang pwedeng gamitin tools in order for like do the job properly pero look that is actually a power diba if you have that na parang innate almost innate kasi syempre you still have to like accumulate that knowledge for years i mean pertaining to our right. early ancestors I think it's still a power somehow. And lalo na kung napapass on siya from generation to generation because it becomes part of the culture. Pero sad to say, parang kukunti lang din yatang evidence that it actually got passed to our culture, the Filipino culture. Kasi, yun nga, if I may recall, uh, mangilan-ngilan lang eh. Uh, I mean, my personal knowledge in eth- ethno-astronomy uh, uh, in the Philippine context, medyo ano eh, very uh, ano to, malabnaw wala akong masyadong nasagap although i i do appreciate the fact that if you visit the national planetarium the national museum planetarium now may bago silang exhibit na parang naka medyo naka ano eh bent on ethno astronomy have yeah, you been yeah. recently to the uh, I, I the planetarium not, but i did but i i gave a talk about it they invited me to give a talk recently about yeah, it yeah uh, may ano eh uh, uh, before i left for ano for oman uh uh, nakada, naka-visit ako sa Manila Planetarium and I was shocked. Actually, bittersweet yung experience sa akin kasi I really like the display showing the scale model rockets and the spacecraft. Tinanggal nila yon Pero maganda naman yung ipinalit kasi ipinapakita nga yung, yung, yung what we uh, as a culture uh, na parang na-achieve natin in terms of ethno-astronomy. Maganda yung mga ipinakita doon. Although, ano, from a personal standpoint din, parang kailangan pa ng konting oomph. Parang kailangan pa madagdagan. No, kasi para ano nga ma-relate din ng mga kababayan natin ngayon why it was yun nga di ba sabi ko parang it was something to be proud of or para siyang power that we had in the ancient times we we don't think of ourselves today no we don't think of ourselves as a technological culture no we are largely a consumer culture Mm-mm. but uh one of the things that i have uh i hope to uh, to to talk more about not just here but you know uh, elsewhere yeah. is to make people realize and appreciate that we come from a two things. First of all, is that I know, uh, our our ancestors were much more technologically advanced than we give them credit for. I'll talk about yeah. that in a few minutes. But mm-hmm. the second part is that by understanding by understanding that we can look at ourselves today and look at ourselves in the future by being becoming more aware of and uh, more appreciative of our relationship with technology. And that's the way okay. moving forward to stop being just consumers 
of technology and understanding how we can how we can develop technology that is more attuned to our perspectives as a culture as a as a as Filipinos. Uh, That's a great going back to then. going back to what I was saying, you know, we were technolo more technologically advanced than we give, than we give ourselves credit for. Credit That's for, it. Yeah. And this and this part of our, my thesis, you know, when you look historically, even the geological records. Uh, the, we, 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 we were taught kasi, that, that Filipinos arrived in the country through land bridges. No? That, yeah, is, yeah. that has been debunked because Luzon palang. Luzon is of particular interest because that is where the oldest uh, known human uh, remains, species, you know, remains uh, or, or in, mm. evidence has been found. Mm. Uh, and and uh, the, the, the recent discovery last year what was that year? The year before, last year, no, uh, oh, yeah. uh, Homo Luzonensis was, diba? But Luzon, according to the geological record, has always been an island. At no point in time was it connected anywhere else with land bridges. Uh -huh. So, so the unanswered question there is, how did people get there? Exactly. Uh, to, to, you know, oh, let's to be honest and to be fair, you know, it could be it could be na no no swerte swerte lang like if there was a storm from somewhere na anod sila nakakapit sila sa mm -hmm. yeah uh, some tree trunk na, na nabuhay sila diba mm -hmm. but another possibility that we do not consider and that we should is that these early humans had boat building technology yes you know and if we fast forward and look at the balangais for instance if we look yeah. at the boat building technology it was already advanced for its time. Our boat building technology by the time of the Spaniards was so advanced that Pigafetta in himself made note of this, that the, the Balangais could run circles around their boats, about, um, yeah. around, the, around the Caracs, the, the Spanish Caracs. We would run circles around them. Our, our if you look up, even, even the, no, no, the, the, there's, thank you for sharing my thesis. No? And I, I hope yeah. you guys can read. It's free online, no? Um, I, I wanted to find the, ano eh, yung, I was trying to find the balangay. Eh. Ito, yeah, 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 yes, it. there. yeah, there you go. See, this, is, this photo, I took this myself from, ano, from the Balangay Museum in Butuan. Ano. Okay. Uh, incidentally, sideline lang, natawa ako, natuwa ako that everything fell into place for me when I was doing my thesis because even before I left for my master's, I happened to have the opportunity to visit the museum and I learned about it, took photos, and I thought that was it. Parang, uy, parang bakasyon, tapos na ang usapan. But when I was doing my thesis, the funny thing was when I, of course, I needed to get permission from all sorts of people yeah. to, <laughs> to use photographs. Eh, ang bagal-bagal uh, nila mag-reply. And some <laughs> of them didn't reply at all. Uh, so I was like, you know, I'll just grab my own photos. And this is one yeah, of the yeah. photos that I took. <laughs> but what I wanted, to, sorry for that digression, but I wanted uh, to point out here, if you look at the way it's constructed, it is very complex. The yeah. the balangais mm. are specifically the, the technical term for them is uh, uh, lug uh, lashed lug boats, because the way the yeah if you can zoom in right each of yeah, these things in. there the, these lug the, these protrusions these rectangular things. Eto eto. Yes yes. Mga, can you imagine? Ano? It was not just a, it was it was no simple thing for the, and these were ano, uh, over a thousand years old right. Yeah. But look at the sophistication of these boats. They're not just planks put together. They were planks that, that had these raised uh, lugs. Yung tinatawag, technically, ang term dyan, tambuko. tambuko. So these lash, lashed lugs, right? So uh, this, this, this is sophisticated because you don't just cut a plank and put it together. You yeah. cut the plank and then kailangan mong i-carve in such a way that it has these raised parts with the holes, right? And what yeah. these do is that you, the, the, these boats were built with, with you know, rope, hemp rope most likely, yeah. threaded through them, and then it, 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 it brings everything together. So there are pegs between the planks that stick them together, but you also have these lashings. Between, uh, that joined these these tambuco, these these lugs together. So what yeah. this did, what this did for the boat is that it made them flexible, flexible yeah. in a, flexible and lightweight, so that they could be carried. And there docu there's documentation of this, you know, that uh, William Henry Scott says this. You know, they would they they would carry these on their shoulders. The people would carry them on their shoulders. Plus, papapansin mo na 
double ended siya, which means it go forward and backward kaagad. Yeah. So these were well suited to the Philippines. Alam naman natin, no, na a lot the Philippines has a lot of coral areas. So yeah. you needed a boat that was that could withstand deep sea and could and could also go into shallow waters. And this was it. It was a Swiss Army knife of its yeah. of a, it was a Swiss Army knife of a boat, very yeah. versatile. Uh, and the larger ones uh, that we know of as the Karakoa, uh, these were these were enough to to carry. I for, I should know this, but I forgot. Fifty people, I think. Marami yeah. talaga, ano? Ito ba yung Plus, tinatawag nilang yeah. ano? Parang terror boats. Yung yes, Karakoa. yes. The terror, the terror yeah. boats that were that were suppo- oh. that were supposedly used for raiding, no? Yeah. Um, of particular note, then. Another, so the dun palang no the the technology used. When I say technology, no, if we think of technology because it was high tech in the modern, but yeah. modern times. But this is also technology. Another thing that we were, that is worth considering, and this is something that was discovered uh, just a few years ago. Now the balangays were thought to be of the same size, roughly I think, if memory serves, mga 25 to 30 meters okay. in diameter. But there was this so-called mother boat, uh, a larger ship. A larger vessel that was found in Butuan alongside them, and this has uh, some striking implications. No, it has not yet been taken out. It has not been entirely exhumed. You know? So, there we okay. still have we still don't know what's down there. But we do know that based on the parts of it that were found, it it is at least twice the size of the other Butuan wow. boats. So, aside from the technological technological mastery needed to do this, it also raises interesting questions about the culture that built it because one has to ask then what is the purpose of having a larger boat and the smaller boats uh, yeah. was this uh, when I interviewed the uh, Dr. Bolunia, the archaeologist who, who was researching this ano? <laughs> Kaya tinawag na mother boat kasi ayaw namin tawagin and I agree no? ayaw tawagin na mothership kasi parang <laughs> aliens di ba parang yeah. aliens. alien alien mothership eh. right di ba but the joke but the the jokes aside no the concept is the same when you talk about a mothership you're talking about a a ship that is the that is the central uh, hub for all of these other ships to report to yeah, so that yeah. if if that is the case and I'm not saying it is because we don't have any evidence yet yeah. but if it if it is the case then that points to a very complex society. You, yeah. we, we have this idea of the balangais, diba? of the people using the balangais, much like today in, in the southern Philippines, the Bajau, where you have a flotilla of ships, all of them similar size, moving together. Na, uh, decentralized yung, ano, yung organization nila, diba? But if you parang, have a mother boat... Walang central, parang walang central... Right. Uh, right. Ano. Okay. right. But if you have a mother boat, if that's what it is, again, I, we don't know yet, if that is indeed what it was, then that suggests a highly organized society of of boat builders of maritime peoples uh, reporting to this build boat. It, it, there are other possibilities. It could be a vessel, a repository for for gold or whatever, or or whatever riches that they had. It was a co- it could have been a communal vessel. It didn't necessarily yeah. have to contain the royal family. It could have had communal. We don't know. But what we're saying is the fact that there are different sizes of of balangais strongly suggests that their str- their society was more technologically and more culturally advanced than we appreciate than we are aware of. Yeah. So what does this have to do with the modern day? So I said earlier, diba, na we need to appreciate our past so that we can understand ourselves in the present and looking forward to the future. Diba? Yeah. We, we, need, we need to appreciate that we came from this tradition and that we are capable of, of not just understanding, but creating our own take on these technologies. So when yes. we move forward, eventually, when we when we become a sa- space-faring people, which will happen eventually, diba, we need to look our, at ourselves and our culture and ask ourselves, what is our place among the stars? This is the this is the jump off point and this is the end the capstone of my thesis, which I okay. invite everyone to read because it's libre naman siya online. Na kailangan natin isipin kung we kung ano yung ano, ano, where where what our relationship is with the stars and with the technologies that will bring us to the stars in the future. We always say a lot, ano, and, and I'm sure we're all familiar with that, na we think of ourselves na 
marami tayong kamag-anak na seamen. We, Filipinos are known as as master seafarers. Okay, yes, fine, fine. And and we should be proud of that. But uh, moving forward, we need to own it. We need to be more more engaged in. We need to be more uh, more proactive in the way we you know, we 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 commune with this technology. With the way we use it, we develop it, de ba? Hindi yes. lang tayo passive consumers lage. Yeah, that's really really inspiring. Because uh, right now, when we think about our place in this whole. Uh, Kasi ano eh, this is really an exciting time in the history of the world. Kasi after parang a long doldrum of just working in low earth orbit, yung dito lang tayo around the earth, ngayon may mga actual strides na for humanity to extend its reach into the solar system uh, with the help of these... Uh, uh, private corporations, diba? Like, you know, the na palaging kinikriticize ngayon ng public kasi they are being funded by these, you know, billionaires. Pero if you think about it, uh, medyo nagdadigress na rin ako dito, pero, and I think I may, I may have mentioned about this either in this group or in my other group, yung Space Huan, na, ano naman eh, um, even in the past, yung mga merong, ano, yung mga merong means to actually delve into these technological feats they were the ones who had the, the money, basically, to really, like, invest and try out these methods para, you know, to further advance uh, human, human society. Meaning, hindi, hindi natin ma-avoid yung fact na this actually requires, uh, you know, uh, an exorbitant amount of money in order to, to be accomplished. So, ang point ko is, the reason why I'm bringing this up, kasi it's an exciting time nga in, in human history. And... Parang we are at a crossroads kung ano yung role natin as Filipinos. Yung, I mean, we now have a uh, fledgling space agency. Pero as, as uh, outlined nga in the uh, Republic, uh, uh, I mean, is it an executive order? Our Asia, no? Or, uh, Republic, ano Act, yes. Republic Act, yes. Republic Act, yeah. So, uh, the law states na initially, may initial plans yung space agency natin. Pero mainly kasi yung isang, ano niya, yung isang objective is to ano nga, to harmonize or yung parang to pull together all of the requirements of the different branches of government when they want to ano so parang ang first role talaga ng space agency actually initially was to for cost ano cost efficiency diba kasi parang ang dami daw different departments na bili ng bili ng satellite data and so on and then that is probably why we are trying our very best now to develop our own satellites parang hindi na nga tayo magdepend on foreign uh, ano to, uh, space capable uh, uh, nations for that data that we we really need no mm-hmm. so pero yun nga yung parang we we will often ask ourselves na hanggang diyan na lang ba tayo yung parang para na lang ba tayong nagsusunod-sunuran na rin uh, meron bang opportunity wherein we can actually like innovate and be parang on the forefront of these things mm-hmm. considering Considering yung mga pinagsasabi mo, uh, I mean, uh, yung sinabi mo lang a few moments ago na it is actually very deep in our culture eh, yung parang the zest to explore, mm-hmm. the zest to innovate. Kasi mahirap na ano yun, gawain. Yun, you, you don't know where you're going to traverse. Ang alam mo lang yung in the horizon, Moana nga, di ba? Moana. Oh, oh, oh. Where the, li- the line where the sky meets the sea. <laughs> yun lang yung nakikita mo eh. The line in which the sky meets the sea. So, nakakatakot. Okay, sige, go on. Oh, I just want to say, I just remembered this, you know, fun fact. The gal- so, alam na alam natin yung galleon trade, di ba? But the galleons mm. were built and manned by Filipinos. Exactly. Kaya nga, di ba? That's why, that's why I got excited about this topic. Kasi naalala ko, when I was a kid, I got really excited by that book. Kasi imagine mo, I was thinking, oh, this is just one of the run-of-the-mill you know, science fiction books na may mga barilan in space, ganon. Biglang nagulat ako yung yung seaman yung nag-ooperate ng ano yung isang navigator nila is isa pinoy yung parang bigla akong na excited although <laughs> ano lang siya minor character lang siya pero of course then later on i encountered uh Heinlein si Hein Heinlein is that how you pronounce his name si Robert Heinlein I actually I don't know either <laughs> Heinlein uh, Heinlein yes Starship Troopers di ba nakakainis nga yung movie eh, kasi the movie depicted the bida as like uh, he was like half Puerto Rican ba yun and half uh, uh, Argentinian 
Kasi in the original ano, Heinlein novel, Starship Troopers, Filipino yung bida eh, si Rico. The, the, the guy Rico is actually a Filipino. So ako din, nag- nagulat ako dun eh. Pero I mean, parang gano'n, na parang science fiction din kasi, uh, dito na, isa-segue ko na dito. Kasi science fiction is a means for us to envision ourselves exactly. in, the, in that place. No, yun yung anon means natin eh. It's it's like a fantasy rin natin. Yung parang, 'di ba, hindi pa kayo nagpapantasya. Alam ko yung iba diyan nagpapantasya na maging astronaut, ganyan kaya nga yung iba talagang when when this guy si uh, Richard Branson is dangling in front of you that prize na Miss Sweepstakes siya, 'di ba? Na you want to become the an astronaut of your country. Sige, ba, mag-join oh. kayo sa akin sweepstakes, baka maging first ano kayo. Ganito, astronaut of your country. Although sa orbital flight lang naman yun, pero that's another story. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Eh, uh, ang point ko naman is ano to? Uh, nawala na ako. Basta yun, um, these things talaga you require inspiration and science fiction provides that inspiration. Right. And maybe right. dito ko, dito ko na isa-segue nga yung fact na yung naalala ko rin kasi I've been talking about sci-fi na uh, nag-segue na ako dun sa fact na Uh, when I was a kid, yun nga, one of the uh, things that I got introduced to was Dune. Pero in the form of the movie, no? Pero hindi nga yung big film kasi dinescourage nga ako. As, as I've told you, parang na-discourage ako sa dad ko na when he said na parang Star Wars lang yan. Pero eventually, <laughs> uh, we our family managed to purchase a Betamax, <laughs> yung Betamax player. And we managed to rent yung Dune, na movie. So sabi ko, oh, ito, chance na to. Panoorin natin yung Dune. So nung pinanood namin, nagulat ako kasi iba siya. Ibang klase rin talaga yung dun Tapos nagulat talaga ako dun sa concept ng navigating through space. Ang ganda ng words ni Frank Herbert, di ba? Mo- uh, ano to? Traveling without moving. <laughs> yun yung, yun yung word, exact words eh, na sinabi niya, yung folding space. Folding of space, yes. yes. Oh, sino ang gumagawa nun? Eto, introduction na to. Kasi may upcoming Dune movie, di ba? Eh, alam ko, ah, uh, Attractive it to na movie to those who know Dune already, like maybe TJ and me, and our good friend si Sir Romar, si Sir Rogel uh, Marisese. Uh, very exciting for us, the uh, October na yung movie. Uh, pero we, we know Dune, I mean, through the novels and of course yung David Lynch movie. May miniseries nga pala na available in YouTube for free. No, may miniseries yung 2000. Medyo, ano, hindi daw maganda yung special effects. Pero actually, story-wise, they said, Closer sa novel yung miniseries eh. Anyway, um, yung idea kasi behind Dune is may isang substance in the universe na pag in mo yung substance na yun, it will give you parang special powers essentially, di ba? And one of those powers that it will give you is parang you will be connected with space-time in a way. Kasi yun nga, ang problema, magiging addicted ka doon like what happened to one of these human uh, humans na nag imbibe noon you will change physiologically di ba parang umiba sila nagulat ako sa scene na yun eh nakakakilabot eh in fact <laughs> actually i think that's the reason na, my the parents navigator. you know my parents were not dune fans kasi ganun nga yung dad ko dismissed it as like parang star wars tapos yung mother ko naman alam mo yung mother ko ano yung madaling makilabot yung nakikilabot siya sa mga things like yung mga uod mga worms. Eh, di ba, merong, merong gigantic thing in the Dune universe, eh. Yung, <laughs> oh, oh. yung giant worm. Di ba, oh, oh. may worm. May connect kasi yon Yung substance na yon may connect doon sa worm ng Dune. So, ngayon, pag, i, pag palagi mong, pag naging addicted ka nga doon sa substance na yon what is that substance? It's the spice melange. Di ba? Yung melange. Pag, pag mag-imbibe ka nun, yung one effect is your eyes will become blue. Diba? Blue on blue. Yung iris mo will become blue. But at the same time, your eyeball will also start glowing blue. Uh, blue. Tapos, yung nangyari doon sa mga navigators, they change their bodies eh. Parang naging, hindi ko ma-describe kung anong klaseng creature sila. para silang fish. para silang fish. Kasi parang they, they, they fish, wanted right? to immerse themselves in the, ano, in the spice. Eh. Kaya nga, yun. So parang naging fish-like sila. Tapos, pero as the movie depicted it, nakalimutan ko na kasi how it was described in the book. Parang talagang, ano eh, physical. Have you seen that movie then? Another sci-fi uh, movie. Yung si, um, doon ko kasi nakita yung mga hand gestures eh. If, siya yung nagpauso nun eh, yung parang mga hand gestures in science fiction. Si Tom Cruise in that movie, um, ano nga ba to? Minority Report. 
Do you remember that movie, Minority Report? Yung parang you manipulate things with your hands using an interface. Yeah, yeah. May parang gumaganong ganon. E ganun din kasi yata yung sa Dune, parang, parang may star map na biglang mag appear in like a fluid suspension in front of the navigator. Tapos if he wants to travel from this point to that point, literally, fold niya eh. Kasi nakikita, for instance, he wanted to travel, they wanted to travel from Caladan to, to, Atre, to Arrakis, di ba, to Dune. Dun sa movie, pinakita talaga na minanifest niya yung Caladan as one planet in this part. Tapos dito naman yung Dun na planet. Tapos parang ginanon niya, winave niya yung kamay niya, tapos pinalapit niya together. So parang pinood niya, niya talaga yung space literally. So yon tapos biglang, nag ano, nag, uh, was this the, the, their spaceship suddenly reappeared, di ba, in orbit around that, uh, ano to, yung planet na Dun. What about you, TJ? Anong, what are your thoughts about Dune and how do you relate it to not the just, way you... Okay. Maganda, no? So not just about Dune, no? but when you think about Dune in pop culture right now and connected to Star Wars, the common thread for them is they are the kind of science fiction which we call space operas. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Diba? Uh, and there is a long Western tradition of space operas. And if you think about it, the space opera, anything, you know, even Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Wars, you name it, most of them are based on the premise. They're very Western, even in their mindset, in the sense that they are about us as humanity colonizing, going into space, uncharted territory, even Star Trek, brave new worlds. The idea is colonizing these other areas, these other planets. So in that sense, science fiction at least popular science fiction in this terms, from even Dune to a certain, to 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 his credit, kasi, and this this is, I will leave this to you know, to to people to actually read the Dune book and onwards, you know. uh, Dune to a large extent acknowledges this, but it also circumvents it, you know? uh, because uh, and this this I I won't go into the details, but when you the whole point of at least the first book, first Dune book, and even the succeeding novels is that. Uh, this I, this push, this this very aggressive outwards uh, push to claim areas to dominate what's out there is actually a folly of humanity, and that yeah. it is something that has its own pitfalls, and we and 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 it has consequences to kahit dun sa bida ng dune, no? But I yeah. digress. The point that I'm trying to make here is that when we think of science fiction, we think of it in Western terms. Yeah. But it's time that we develop our own Philippine-centric ideas of of uh, of uh, uh, of science fiction. What do I mean yeah, by yeah. this? So I established it, but the idea of the space opera. No, this, this yeah. I, it's, it, if you think about it, it's no, it, it is it's Magellan all over again. Diba? It has it yeah. has a very colonist colon, colonial mentality. Yes, uh, imperialism basically. Exactly, yung... imperialism. Or extending, essentially nga, uh, nakakatawa, gumawa ako recently rin in my own uh, page na parang a very quick rundown summary of Dune uh, for yung mga hindi familiar na nakakatawa eh. Just to make a long story short, sabi ko nga, imagine nyo na lang, it's just basically capitalism extended in, in space. Exactly. It, oh, it, 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 it is, it, it's an extension of imperialism. no? But mm. when we think about Philippine society, Hindi tayo ganun. Even not just Philippines, like Southeast Asian cultures. I'm not saying, of course, uh-huh. that we did not have our own conquerors and we did not have our own wars. Of course, we did, no. But our relationship with neighboring countries, well, the countries, because there was the concept of country was not around a thousand years ago. Uh-huh. Our our relationship with our environment and our relationship with other peoples within this area is different. Diba? It was largely it was largely based on trade. Um, and and movement in an area where uh, the idea of ownership of laying claim was different, the the, the relations, yeah. the power structures were are completely different from what we see in 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 the West, diba? So that is something very it's very communal, it's very shared, and that extends to science fiction. And also science fact. That's what I meant earlier when I said that we need to reestablish, reconnect with ourselves as Filipinos in 
the space firing context, reestablish what it means to be Filipino in relation to the technologies that we use and how we use them. And that's exactly what I mean. When we go out into space, we, it, it bears remembering that uh, this journey into space does not always and does not always have to be told in terms of conquering, in terms of laying claim to other things. Right? Yeah. Uh, we we look at our past that we can look at our future and we can ask ourselves well, what does what does the past teach us what can it teach us about how we will I was about to say colonize we see there's not it's even the language itself eh? we can we think about it not in terms of colonizing space uh, of living in space perhaps right? uh, we need to think about that and I think our past as a, as, a, as a people can help inform that moving forward. Yeah, pero di ba may kasabihan na when people uh, write stories, it's because they don't only express their hopes but also their fears. Mm-hmm. So probably, yun nga, yung ating fiction in our different cultures is a manifestation also of what we probably don't want to happen. Yung parang it's like we're trying to predict something as a warning to the future generations that if we degrade or parang if we somehow de-evolve no na ganito ang mangyayari this this might happen to human civilization so i think hindi naman sa kinokontra ko yung yung thoughts mo about western na science fiction kasi meron namang mga works of western science fiction which i believe ganun nga yung bent na parang it serves as a warning eh na if you keep on this road Talagang it will eventually lead instead to loy na it would be beneficial to travel through space exploring new places to live it would be beneficial yung point lang nga, i think yan nga yung point ng alien franchise eh. kasi basically that's what happened not tipong they discovered like this place i mean kung alisin mo muna yung fact that in the alien franchise the aliens were like a weapon parang ganun kasi yung story eventually mm-hmm. pero just just let's just take the original movie yung first alien movie they discover like a place wherein there are these eggs, no? And these eggs hatched and they got wiped out. Diba? Ganon. So parang it's a reminder eh, na parang yung curiosity killed the cat thing. Na parang there might be limits to your greed. Na parang kung pupunta ka dyan, may mga areas talaga na dapat hindi mo itouch or hindi mo puntahan. Parang yun din kasi yung essence eh, for me ng first movie. Siyempre, Hollywood, you know, Ginawa na nila nilang ng later stories yun kasi they wanted to bank on the fact na naging popular siya. Pero kasi para sa akin yun yung essence din ng Alien series eh, na parang it serves also as a warning of our fears, no? Na parang siguro we're tampering too much with this and that will lead to bad consequences. So, yeah, uh, yung admiration ko naman din kasi sa Dune is the fact that uh, Herbert as a writer, yung kanyang, uh, the way he envisions, ano to, yung the way he translates uh, conventions that we know in our in day-to-day nating society and our cultures how he manif- mas- manifested it in that milieu no at saka yung paggamit niya ng mga ano uh, ano to yung mga terminologies like yung mga terms na ginagamit niya ano eh uh, hango sa let, let's say the arabic culture di ba mm-hmm. mga ganon and ano talaga eh, it fascinated me eh, kasi Nakakatawa, hindi niya kaya naisip yun na may mga moments. Wala ako na-encounter na ganun sa text eh, ng Dune na. For instance, when they were talking about uh, the, the Fremen, kasi parang they, they really, parang they're like the Bedouins eh, di ba, of the uh, uh, Arabic desert. Pero wala man lang nag-talk about navigational devices or yung mga astrolabes or anything like that. Parang maganda sana kung may connect, di ba? Kaya na, naaliw din talaga ako sa, sa text itself ng Dune eh. Pero the reason why I also mention it, kasi... I think this new movie is trying to get new ano, uh, fans aboard. Kaya nga tingnan mo, yung mga sa casting nila, pini- strategic din yung casting, di ba? They selected these young new actors, itong si Timote Shala- Shalami. Uh, na- natatawa nga ako eh, kasi when I started the room, I had to find you so that I can add you so that we can start the conversation. Alam mo ba nung tinipe ko yung Timothy, mayroon pa lang user dito na Timothy Shalame yung kanyang name. <laughs> Kaya nga sabi ko, uy, talagang ano, he is really popular siguro among the young people nowadays. Kaya nga very very strategic. Pero alam mo hindi, hindi pa natin kasi napanood yung movie. Eh. Ano kaya yung modern take ni 
Denibel no. Kasi he took liberty din daw eh. He took oh, liberty man. din daw. Al- alam mo siguro ikaw, baka you might be delightfully surprised if yung mga gusto mo sanang ano, mga themes that would arise, parang baka hopefully magmanifest yon para at least culturally kasi di ba yun nga eh, may mga ano eh, may mga may mga debate din ngayon about yung mga changes being made like kasi to adapt to the modern times di ba na ano daw bakit daw puro white yung people in like in the in the dune universe right. di ba ni Frank oh. Herbert kaya ngayon tingnan mo tin, pinalit, pinalitan nila si Liet Kynes they made, made her uh, made him into a woman di ba in the ano and she is black Mm-hmm. Diba? May mga ganong changes eh. So if they are doing liberty with those changes, who knows, no? Baka may ginawa din silang injection in terms of the themes. Yung sinasabi mong themes to, to counter that. Pero I know what you mean. Sana, yung mga ganong attempts would be indigenous. But then we have you, TJ. Kaya nga, ikaw yung maglilid ng pack. Yung I don't, <laughs> pack. It, it's, not, it's not a one-man job. Ano? I think yeah, we all yeah, have yeah. to do that. So, Thank you for the kudos. But that's that's also uh, reason. That's also the reason why I'm eager to talk to people about this. Because, parang I think I don't think I'm so much. Ano, I I don't think I'm so much a a leader as a Johnny Appleseed of ideas, as it were. <laughs> okay. The point is the point is we we hope to encourage people to 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 dream and to pr- yeah. make their own. You know, make their own content. Yeah. Uh, I remember I remember a long time ago. Um, it is a long time ago, over a decade, a decade and a half ago, when Neil Gaiman came to the Philippines for the first time. Ah, oh, okay. Um, even then, of course, he, he was very famous, Shan, no? and he yeah. he developed a soft spot for Philippine mythology. Him being a, a fantasy writer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but here's the interesting thing: what people don't quite know is that. Uh, uh, he actually funded out of his own pocket a, ano, a, ano to, a quietly without his name attached funded a ano, a writing contest the philippine wow. graphic okay. fiction the philippine graphic fiction uh storytelling contest um to, unfortunately it had just a couple of years run in it it was successful in its own right but didn't carry through but the story i wanted to say was that um, a lot of people did try to talk to him and said, "Hey, you're a great writer. I know. Why don't you write something about Philippine mythology?" And you know what he said? He said, "I can't do that. You're in the best position to do that for yourselves." Mm. And that is that. That for me, that inspired me for several reasons. The first of all is, "Oh nga, bakit nga ba natin kailangan uh, mapansin?" ng ibang bansa, di ba? Why cannot we make our own content and be proud of it and ne- let it grow by itself? Trece is a good yeah. example of that. Budget, uh, who is a good friend of mine, incidentally, also, you know, he just worked at it. So, right, 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 and then it gained a following and there you go. Now it's on Netflix, no? But yeah. it was very organic. And the thing is, we, as a, I think it's also a cultural thing, you know, we, we tend to, for better or worse, we tend to be deferential, we tend to be shy. Uh, so we don't think of ourselves as leading, you know. But I think we should do that, no? Mm-hmm. We, let's be brave and make our own content. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter if it's just for a circle of friends within this group, you know, but you know, to dream and to make our own content. Uh, yeah, so, so basically the point that I'm getting at is, uh, is that we we have an opportunity to to dream for ourselves to take the reins as it were for ourselves and to to dream the future as we want it to be for ourselves and we are in the best position we are the only people in the position in our in this position because we know ourselves we know our culture and we we it's time that we took the pen and wrote our future for ourselves yeah yeah because it would be kind of ironic then na parang one day some famous writer or like screen uh, na to screen writer would be like making a movie tas ang setting would be like uh, within our culture no na parang sci-fi ano tapos hindi tayo parang directly involved in it somehow na parang hindi tayo nagsulat hindi tayo ang nagano parang it would be ironic parang parang may nangyari na yata ng ganyan di ba ng mga several instances wherein um like Nag, ano pa nga, may mga protest. I can't recall lang kung which particular movie or book 
na parang somebody made a movie and then it became popular, it became famous. But then yung actual culture mm-hmm. that that is depicted in that movie, nag, parang nag-protest sila. Pero parang medyo ano rin yung protest nila, eh? may mixed emotions eh. Kasi they're, they're happy that their culture got represented or shown. Pero parang wala kasi silang direct involvement in it. Kaya parang... Are you, I know you recall? I can't recall specifics, yeah. but yes, it does ring a bell. May, may mga ano eh, may mga ganong cases in the past eh. So, uh, I, I, I'd hate for that to happen na uh, sa, sa Philippine uh, context. Pero actually, nangyari na. Kasi yun nga, yung katulad ng mga sinasabi ko in the past na I've encountered sci-fi na may mga Pinoy nga in the story. So, uh, ano, yung initial, ano mo lang, feeling is uh, with glee, no? And I think, ito, may nare-relate na naman akong something going on in social media right now. Yung may mga, ano ngayon, di ba? May, may mga debacle regarding these uh, vloggers no alam mo alam mo yung yari no yung mga yeah. uh, ano eh yung parang ano nga yung term na yan yung parang the reason why Filipinos love to watch these things is meron tayong ano eh we want external to be like affirmation external affirmation yan, uh, oh parang we, we want to be affirmed na parang uy ano Pinoy na ano kami na, oh na ano na na feature kami ano nakikita kami so admittedly ganun siguro yung feeling ko yung initial glee that I got when I encounter these sci-fi uh, novels depicting Filipinos, galing din doon. So, yun nga, meaning, na-realize ko ngayon na that can actually be exploited. And eto na nga, et, this is what these vloggers do. They actually exploit that, di ba? To gain a lot of likes and a lot of follows. Pero yun nga, tama ka, it should evolve further. Hindi lang sa, you get, ano, parang warm-hearted na na-mention ka na isang Pinoy character in this. Mas maganda na talagang, you know, from us, from our people talaga magkamang isang like a really ano to uh, we're not we're not also trying to ano to uh, demean or parang uh, devalue yung yung ano yung mga recent works na talagang yeah like Trese for instance or uh, mm-hmm. similar works na talagang nagaano no pero something more naman on the aspect or on the field of the sciences di ba na Para nga ma-elevate yung fact na we are capable in these fields. No? We, we know a lot of things yeah. and perhaps, uh, katulad nito, uh, you remember that? We were talking about that also in, in uh, recently. Yung, there are features on the planet Mars that are named after uh, like uh, geographical locations in the Philippines or towns, for instance. So, ganon, yung tipong, it, it triggers you to think na, Ang saya nun, no, na kung talagang may mga Pilipino na one day on Mars, they would be actually be living in these areas. And they were named, no? Na after actual areas uh, in the Philippines. So you would think na, pero paano sila nakakating doon? Is it through our own means? ba? Kasi ganito eh. Ito yung de- uh, parang pwedeng mangyari. I'm just parang trying to look into the future, no? Kasi Elon nga, ba wants to establish presence on Mars, he said. Tapos yun nga, medyo nag-react yung iba kasi sabi niya, ang, ang, hindi lang naman daw puro scientists and researchers yung, yung titira doon. Sabi niya, of course, yung mga day-to-day stuff that needs to be attended to, kailangan ding maasikaso. Like, siguro yung, yung sewage system, yung sanitation, yung, ano, yung crew that will take care of all the food. So, merong domestic help na kailangan. Hmm. So, talagang, ano, uh, ano to, mag- Meron din daw slots that will be open for people who want to work on Mars for that. Mm. Diba? Pero yun nga, diba, doon napapasok yung sinasabi ko kanina na oh, oh. ganun na lang ba? Ganun na lang ba? Yung ganun lang ba tayo? Natin? Domestic helper pa rin ba tayo? <laughs> Pag, pagdating natin doon, no? Na pagdating natin doon, they would just be requiring us to like operate their trash compactors or like, you know, crew ng Jollibee on Mars. <laughs> Parang ganun. Kaya nga eh, kaya nga ano 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 in what capacity? Kaya ano eh, pero ano mga ano lang to no, mga you know, mga thoughts lang pero it is, it's interesting. Oo. Eh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Kaya nga ganun, meaning to prevent that, to inspire the young people. Maganda talaga na y- y- we, we think of a milieu wherein talaga mayroon tayong independent effort to to ano to to reach into the stars right, to, right. to find our way. And kaya nga i-share ko na ngayon uh, if you don't mind, uh, sa share screen, yung the work that you done, no, with that uh, comic uh, creator. Sky uh, Yeah, wait. Uh, window. 
Bakit ayaw? Ayun. So I'm gonna find that. So here it is. Ito po ay isang work ni TJ along with uh, comic artist John Bumanglag, no? The Sky Gypsies. So ito siya. This is really and, old, like 15, no. Yeah, almost 15 years old na to. Pero alam mo talaga, yung style ni Bumanglag, the way he he did this si John, mm. ang ang unang pumasok sa isip ko kasi alam mo, uh, I had a few when when I was growing up. I I got my hands on copies of yung Ano to, yung Metal Herland. You know ah. that artist, si Jean Giraud. Uh, oh, yeah. and, si, and meron din akong heavy Obvious. metal. Yeah. Yung heavy metal ng mga ano, comic books. Are you familiar with the heavy metal series? Very much. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, yeah. I can say, outright, although I won't speak uh, on his behalf most of the time, I can say with certainty that uh, Mobius uh, was a particular influence on him when he was doing Ah. Music. Oh, si, yes, si John yes. Bumanglag, yeah. Oh. Well, kasi ano eh, yung, yung style ng art talaga, it really, I mean, the, the visuals are captivating. Talagang you will be really drawn with, ano eh, with the, with the storyline. Ano, the, guys, we're going to, ano, okay lang naman TJ, no? We're going to share the link uh, as a comment. Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, okay, I'm going to share it here uh, in the comment section now. Oh, may mga comment nga pala dito, babasahin ko na rin no? while I'm trying to scroll through your uh, Sky Gypsies. May mga nag-comment dito. Yung Moana, uh, si, from Joel Celis, yung Moana medyo maraming nagalit na Polynesian, bakit daw mataba si Maui? <laughs> <laughs> Isa yan itong comment na to. Ah. Oh. Uh, isn't it Moana? Maybe we were talking about Moana earlier na baka uh, yung mga Polynesian yung nag-react. Parang I don't recall uh, uh, any backlash. I, I, in fairness to, ano, to Moana, as far as I can tell, it was uh, very well done. Uh, okay, okay. Of course, there were some liberties, but it was well done. Okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Sige, while you're, while you're looking through that, ano, I just have to say, uh, what's okay. amazing about the, the Polynesian navigators, the wayfinders, is um, they, all of this, in the, they have a navigator has to has to remember the the movement of if I'm not mistaken roughly 300 different stars uh, across over a year, no? and they help transmit this. You know, they transmit this uh, this through oral traditions. Uh, yeah. I don't know the specifics, no, but they have particular names for for the stars uh, and they they have their own asterisms of course and what's interesting is kaya very that 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 part of the song now where the sky meets the sea it calls me uh, where the sky yeah. meets the sea that line where the sky meets the sea it calls me that is actually yes. more significant than we than we realize kasi yeah. ang ginagawa pala nila is they would look at what stars rise in the horizon and yeah. by un knowing knowing what stars arose, they are able to tell where they are and and what time it is where they are. So it yeah, is, yeah. it is it is it is an astrolabe. It's an internal mnemonic astrolabe for them. So it's very fascinating. So going to this comic now that you shared it, no. Um, yeah, this, kasi, alam mo na, this this scene talaga is fascinating. Eh, kasi, I mean, the first glance you see. Uh, of this, talagang nag-click agad eh. it's, it's a spaceship. <laughs> it's a space. It's a spaceship, di ba? Tapos ang ganda ng name niya, Karumarga, di ba? Is it like it, may ano ba to? Hango ba to sa isang uh, tausu bird or like a bad tower? This is Bajau. All the, uh. the culture here is entirely Bajau. Actually, interestingly that uh, interesting that you asked that question because um, the ba De, sorry, backtrack muna, no? So this whole story focuses on, ano, on essentially, funny thing is, Bajau's in space, you know? How, how Bajau might navigate and might commune with, with space. And the names here uh, were chosen not entirely at random. It, the, the whole, the, the, this is all informed by a book. Incidentally, I, I, lo I, I love, no, not let go, pero di ko na mahanap yung original copy ko. I just recently got uh, a new copy which I found online. That's uh, this one. Yung Celebrations with the Sun. 
by Bruno Botinolo, an overview okay. of religious phenomena among the Bajaos. And there, yeah, that that okay. was that was one of the things described. It's an actual. Ako, I have to say, ano, um, I'm always worried about myself when I write because I am an outsider to these cultures, and of course, I don't want to be. I don't want to pull a nas daily, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I I have always been open when I talk about this and I talk about the my sci-fi work to say na I am an outsider to these cultures and. I do. I try to do as much research as I can, and try to be sensitive so that I do not, uh, do not, don't uh, inadvertently misrepresent uh, them. Yes, uh, yes. So far, so far, so good, man. I have not yet received any complaints. As, as a matter of fact, the people who I have shown this, anthropologists and uh, even ano, mga of Pajau descent mismo, were very positive about uh, the reception was positive. So I'm thankful for that. Um, but I, all I have to say is I am not uh, I am not uh, immune to mistakes, and I think anyone who wants to do something like this, the key is being open and uh, receptive to to uh, open and sensitive to the cultures and receptive to you know, to criticism and feedback. Yes, we yes. are we are outsiders to them. Uh -oh. uh, what am I going to say? Anyway, have, have you? No, uh, have you like have you like uh, shown this work to like, an actual Bajau or like at least na nakita nila uh, or na, na kwento mo sa kanila? Na, not directly, but I have talked to, okay. to scholars. At uh, okay naman. Okay. Na natuwa, uh, natuwa nga sila. Uh, 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 I have yet to in, in the this this the story the short story itself is roughly fifteen years old. The comic book yeah. is a few years younger than that. Two or three years younger, so like what, thirteen yeah. years old, uh, yeah. And in all that span of time, I have not received a single complaint. So, wobakaswerte lang ako. <laughs> but I'm always open, naman, so because if there's anything wrong with it, let me know. So far, so um, good. yeah. Um, but of course, you do admit the fact that sometimes si soya ne, yung parang the fact na baka hindi pa siya widely circulated. Baka yung statistically, kaya konti pa yung hits mo. Right. Meaning, if, mm -hmm. if baka pa mag-increase yung viewership niya, baka dyan ka na makaka-encounter ng, you know, some... Kasi it's, it's just a fact of life. You cannot appease True. everyone. Meron okay. talagang, ano dyan, may mga ma, ma, <laughs> medyo mara-ruffle yung feathers nila if uh, ganito or ganyan. Pero you know what? Kasi I know some Taosugs, you know? Personally, I have Taosug friends. I'm really curious eh, what what the reaction could be if they get if you could share it with encounter. them i would love to yeah. get their feedback too. yeah in fact we have some members here eh, na, who are into astronomy who have grown up in holo and in tawi tawi we have members in philippine astronomy forum and they do, they actually share you know some of their astrophotography there in the ang ganda ng langit nila doon ang ganda ng mm. sky doon in their areas kasi malayo sa light pollution so i'm really curious eh, if they encounter something like this kasi ano eh yung I mean, to someone who is into this, lalo na kung someone who's into sci-fi, knowing that, ano nga, yung tipong, you can actually, we have the capacity to create such, ano no, interesting works. Baka, ano nga, maka, it can, it can like, snowball ba? Yung, yung, what I'm thinking is, sana magkaroon nga tayo ng pa, parang snowball effect for, for young people yeah, yeah, na exactly. ano, mahilig magsulat. Kasi, um, I don't know if Definitely she's watching that kasi, I'm, I don't know if he's watching because my, my daughter is also a member of this of the Philippine Astronomy Forum and dati kasi mahilig yung daughter ko mag ano yung sa ano yan Wattpad gawa ng mm -hmm. parang ano to yung mga fanfic usually eh. but yeah, of yeah. course may, may, may tie in to her interests kasi syempre mm -hmm. yung exposure to, to western culture and so on kaya baka natatawa ako kasi ano eh uh, na, natawa siya when I told her na uy ano Ngayon, lately ko lang napanood yung Moana. <laughs> when, when it was being shown in the theaters, hindi ko masyadong pinansin. Pero when I actually watched it, talagang naano ako, okay, na-affect ako, tawa siya ng tawa. Pero she's into writing, and I was thinking, pero ano, uh, yun nga, I, I'm trying to find a way to encourage her siguro na if you if you really are serious about writing, eto yung magaganda ngayong i-explore na subjects, yung something not borrowed, 
hindi mo hiniram, but something talagang totally indigenous. Maybe right, you right. want to explore on so, that. That's what I want to point uh-huh. out. No? So we mm-hmm. already have that in terms of mythology. No? Thank goodness. I mean, mm-hmm. of course, the most recent and probably the biggest effort that comes to mind is uh, Trece, diba? Oh, in Trece uh, nga. Trece has, I hope, open the floodgates no to other people who uh-huh. are inspired by Bujet's work to to do their own uh fantasy writing. Uh, uh yeah. but again the other side of that and that's what I'm interested in is the science fiction aspect of it. Yeah. To we'll talk about Philippine culture into the future. Yeah. yeah. Para, a lot of yun nga, that. Oh. as as your ano nga yung yung as your line of interest and your profession says na you're interested in promoting STEM. Diba? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. para ganun nga, na parang may parang connect in that aspect if we encourage people to, you know, be more interested in writing in this sort of ano to, milieu and ano. Uh, I think we can open the room. Pero ewan ko lang kung merong interested people. Pero hindi ko nga, uh, chinecheck ko kanina kasi sa device settings if automatic na ba. So, ngayon, we're announcing na if anyone wants to chime in their thoughts, uh, on our uh, what we've shared so far, you uh, the room is now available, no? Because I think what's gonna happen yeah. is I'm just gonna get requests. So, kung nanonood kayo and you want to participate, the room is now open. We have nine viewers, eh. So, tignan natin kung baka may gustong, baka may nag-aantay lang dito na mag-ano, eh, na biglang mag-jump in, eh. So, anyone, if you want to join, just, uh, I don't know, just, ay, teka, isi-share ko ulit yung link to the room. Sige, sana ba yan? Uh-huh. Where will I find that? Hmm. Paano nga ba to? Pati ako nawala eh. Uh, may, may ano to eh, may, may button dito na I'm supposed to click and uh, I'd be able to like share the link again for the room. But I can't find it. Teka, settings and the room screen sharing. That's strange. Sige, try ko na lang itong whole link to the window, whether this will uh, work. Mm-hmm. Ayun, join your room. Okay, guys, nandiyan na yung button sa comment section, join your join the room. So if you want to join us, uh, medyo na, ano tayo, no? we went off the track with our outline. Pero actually, kasi uh, you talked about your thesis earlier na rin. So I felt na magja-jump na ako, nag-jump na ako agad dun sa Sky Gypsies. Uh, to to show our ano no, yung work na uh, the Sky Gypsies. Uh, is there anything ngayon kasi we're towards the tail end na ng ating discussion. Uh eto nga the fact that you uh you mentioned that you're interested in STEM uh, and you are a science communicator. So how would you feel na how does this contribute in the long run to us as a well, you know, you know, you are you now reside in Manila, right? And yeah. uh, ano ngang ano ngang ano ngayon mode of quarantine is implemented. ECQ. Ano ng mode? It's the ECQ. This is the more strict one, di ba? Na talaga yep. mas limited yung movement and everything. And of course, everyone is like sighing or maybe exasperated about all these decisions being made na hindi effective, when in fact. At the end of the day, when you think about it, uh, parang ano yan, yung, you, you reap what you sow. Diba? <laughs> yung ganon. Kasi when you want to choose leaders, you have to choose leaders. Uh, I mean, people who choose leaders kasi, uh, have to be aware of the bigger picture. Is that one of the goals perhaps of like when you introduce someone to science, you are teaching them the skills to view things from a greater that's one way of vantage looking, point. That's one way of looking at it. You know? uh, one of the things that I love saying is that, though, so when we talk about science, we don't talk about just discoveries and whatnot. We look at it as a, we think of it as a way of seeing the world. You know? okay. it, science is a, not just a systematic body of knowledge. It is also the process towards which we have been able to acquire that yeah. body of knowledge. It's a that's tool, science. right? Yes, it's, it's a, a tool. tool. Yeah. And this is a tool that we can use in our daily lives when we when we look at everything and the reason why i i talk a lot about science fiction and history is because as kids we think of 
these subjects as discrete. Eh. Science is science. Physics, yeah, it's, yeah. it's adjacent to math. And then you have history. And then you have whatever sub subjects, right? But these are all part of, this, of a continuum. And these are all the same thing. When I talk about the Balangais, I like to talk about it in terms of the history of science. And the reason why yes. I, I talked about it in terms of technology is because I wanted to show that the past can be viewed through the lens of science and technology. Right? Yes. We don't think about it that way. So history, science, technology, the history of science, the history of technology, that's, those are unexplored areas in the Philippines. Um, when we look at science then as a tool, that brings us to science as a tool for everyday lives. It helps us, it, it helps us to understand uh, what's happening out in the world to make sense of uh, developments in, in uh, current events, Diba. Uh, what's, what are these new variants coming out? Uh, what are the effects of the vaccine? Should I really be worried? Yung bagyo, what are the pro what's the probability of it hitting us? All of this is science. One of the things that I also like to talk about, and thank you for giving this opportunity, is hindi rin kasi totoo na wala tayong science per se in popular culture and in science in, in the news. Okay. I like to point out that a lot of science news get does come into the Philippines, but we don't think of it as science news. What do I mean? Example, Kunware, the people of this forum. Uh, we're all I I presume we're all up to date with SpaceX. We're all up to date with uh, all of the news about uh, about NASA and and whatever, right? but ask yourselves when that news comes out in Philippine newspapers. Where does it come out? There, so GMA News is the only uh, section that has a science and technology section. Sorry, it's the only news outlet that has science and technology section. Pero sa ibang jario, wala. You talk about SpaceX, it would most likely come out in international news. You talk about Tesla. It will most li likely come out in the motoring section, diba? or business, yeah. or business section, diba? Yeah. Uh, alternative power. It will alt alt alternative power, newly developed uh, uh, power generation tools. It will most likely come out in the business section, diba? Yeah, yeah. But we don't. We the bottom line is that the science is there, the science news is there, but we don't think about it in terms of science, and we should. Because once we see, see that these things can be understood through the lens of science, that empowers us to be able to make more informed decisions about ourselves, about this incoming science and technology. And it makes us better equipped to make decisions about our, com our incoming leaders and the kinds of technologies that we adopt moving forward, individually and as people. Yeah. Ano nga eh, it's funny because I recall na in the early 80s nga one reason why I got excited with something we you and I both like yung yung series ni Jim Burke yung connections mm -hmm. was the fact that yung ano yung yung na mention mo kanina yung compartmentalized yung subjects in classes diba pa iba iba uh, what I liked about that is the fact that it it shows you na they're interrelated kaya nga connections eh diba mm -hmm. na parang it's a continuous stream of, of information na uh, it doesn't mean that science lang, science lang yan. Meaning, what you learn in the sciences, you're supposed to like apply to the other fields. Right, right. You try to to exercise yung ano. Kaya nga, ito yung nakakatawa eh. Let's, let's just take one particular example. Yung voting machine. No? When, when a voting machine comes out, iba yung, yung thought, I think, processes ng, ng maybe the average citizen eh. Parang, they think of it automatically lang as this item to probably like speed up something. Diba? Parang ganon. Pero hindi nila siguro nakikita yung, yung chances of it being a tool. Kasi nga, it's a scientific development that was created to minimize, for instance, cheating. Diba? Parang ganon. Yung parang yung immediate ano kasi ng mindset, I think, sometimes ng tao is when they see something, a piece of technology develop, na parang yung immediate and more obvious na gamit. So, yun nga, siguro talagang, ano eh, going back to what I said, na parang science also has that, ano, yung lumalawak yung pananaw natin, yung let's take a step back. Now, this machine 
has more functions other than just speeding things up. It actually has those advantages na parang it will tr try and minimize uh, uh, cheating and uh, it will also make things more systematic and so on. Parang ganun. Meaning, um, I think, ano eh, uh, ano rin, uh, another thing, med medyo ano, magulo yung, ano, ano, yung reaction ko kasi kung ano nung pumasok sa isip ko nung while you were talking. <laughs> I, I ano, understand. Hindi, na naalala, no, naalala ko kasi, you were talking about the newspapers, right? And ano yung nakalagay. Nat nat natatandaan ko rin, another series in, back in the 1980s, yung Cosmos ni Carl Sagan, no? May isang episode yung Cosmos na he was looking at a newspaper, si Carl Sagan, tapos sabi niya, oh, tingnan nyo, uh, ano to? Uh, saan, na, saan yung mga science news? Ano niya? Or yung astronomy news? So, hinanap niya. Uh, hindi mo halos makita eh. Pero pag, pag, ano, pag open mo sa gitna ng paper, nandyan yung astrology page. <laughs> <laughs> yung about astrology, di ba? Parang oh. ganon. Yung tipong, ano eh, misprioritized eh sometimes. At saka hindi nga clearly organized. Pero sayang kasi it's an opportunity for the general masses to be introduced to it. Pero hindi lang siguro, wala lang adequate training. By the way, my sister is a journalism major and she now teaches journalism at the Mindanao State University. Sana nanonood yung sister ko, no? Kasi sometimes natatopic din namin ito, eh. Lalo na if we, if I, I tell her, tingnan, nyo, tingnan mo itong headline na to, parang minasakar nila yung news about this particular <laughs> science development. Kasi, ano, yung, yung journalists have to be aware of these terminologies, no? Parang hindi, hindi nakakatawa yung, yung result. Please do get parang yung research me. I hope, Please yeah. do get her in touch. I'd like to touch base yeah. with her. Figure out what, see what. Uh, yeah, she she's now the I acting like chair that. chair of their depart journalism department sa ano sa MSU. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll I'll connect you with my sister. Tapos, yes, kasi re, ano ba yung nasa isip ko? It may na encounter lang din kasi ako recently na ano yun, na news item na ano um ano to? Ano mga bayon? Basta parang may robot being built eh, somewhere in Japan bayon. Tapos. Parang is it ano biglang may nag-mention about uh, ano to uh, uh, Gundam ba yon or something mm -hmm. tapos mali mali yung reference ah, oh, it was not BBC, oh nakita yeah, mo yan BBC, oh yung sa BBC Transformers <laughs> daw yung Gundam oh ay Transformers so oh, oh. tapos pero di ba binawi agad mm -hmm. actually it, it took like maybe hours lang eh or maybe even minutes eh, na parang change agad Kasi oh, pero wala, so, somebody scripted it. O, oh. oh, sa bagay, na-screen grab na. Lahat, buti na banggit mo nga yung robots in the context of Japan. This is also a very good example of what I'm saying about looking at the cultural dimensions of technology. We think of technology as, as you know, something solid like this phone or this computer, di ba, na ilalapag tapos gagamitin mo. But we don't think about the 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 the, you know, the social dimensions what do i mean by this that's a good example pansinin natin the way japan uh de develops its own cartoons about robots and even the way it treats robots is very different from the way robots are treated in the west yeah, case yeah. in point i compare mo pa lang uh, astro boy kunware ver and even evangelion to that extent versus mm -hmm say, the Terminator series, diba? In the West, and I'm sure you're laughing because I know this is something that's been on, that's on your mind also, you know, and yeah, I, yeah. I'd like to hear your thoughts, but mm. in the West, we they think of robots as fear, as something to be feared, as alienating, diba? Oh, robots mm -hmm. are going, are replacing our jobs, they're going to take over our jobs, ganyan, ganyan. But in, in Japan, it's completely different. Even as early as the 1950s, Robots were considered as helpers, as friends, as things that can work in harmony with people. So that informs Tuloy their own culture. It's no, it's no surprise that Japan became such an advanced uh, technological force, precisely because it had a people that had that was very comfortable with technology. So that's what I'm saying. When we look at our past and craft and, and look at our future through the lenses of science, technology, and our own culture, diba? we should try to think of it fit in those terms. Specifically, diba? what would Philippine society be, be like when, when we adopt robots? Should we be afraid of them? Should we, should, or like the West? Or should we embrace them like the Japanese? How will, the, will these technologies be embedded into our culture? How do we make it, quote-unquote, Filipino? 
'di ba? Yeah. Um nagulat nga ako I recall one time uh, uh, some someone I know purchased one of those ano to? Ano nga pangalan nito? Um, there is a brand name for that thing na very famous pero ngayon they're basically yung robot vacuum cleaners. Pero there's this one particular brand din na very famous yung parang flat lang siya, parang pancake style. Uh, I, I just forgot the, oh, the yeah. name. Oh, yeah. The room, Roomba, parang yung Roomba. Roomba, Roomba. Yung Roomba, Roomba. Roomba. Okay. Yeah, the Roomba. Ba- yeah. So, ano eh, um, she got a Roomba. Uh, she, she was one of the first people I knew eh, na nag, ano, in, some years back, na bumili ng Roomba and she was like, ano, parang people, I mean, her Filipina friends, parang uh, still couldn't grasp na, ano, you would be doing that. Kasi, yung typical Filipino ano na may may walis naman pwede mo namang walisin so why 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 would you adapt that nasa ganung level pa lang eh. i'm just trying to react right away to what you said how would we react if there are such devices right, within right. our premises ganun eh kasi ano nga tayo medyo hindi naman i don't want to use the term backward thinking pero yung point ko is ano pa rin tayo medyo mailang din pa rin tayo sa technology yeah. on on how to to utilize it pero yun, I'm really, I was really happy eh, na parang, uy, ano ka, parang kung saan pa, ano nga term din dyan, yung parang, you're on the forefront kasi, oh, pinakita mo agad, sinare mo na you're using that, ano, kasi Early she's adopter. not around much. <laughs> oh, kasi she's not around much in that in that flat, in that apartment. Kaya nga, inoperate lang niya, pinoprogram lang niya to like, clean the, ano, the floor and everything. So, kaya naaliwa ko. At the same time, um, ano nga ba yung sasabihin ko? I, I'm, I'm a loss for words here. Na ano ako eh, na, na, na ano yung mind ko dun sa recalling the name of that thing eh, yung, ano, yung room ba? <laughs> Biglang nag-blank tuloy yung mind ko. But uh, you were talking about, ano di ba, your last, uh, ah, yun, yun, yung about robots and yung, ano to, yung whether yung, uh, they are, uh, ano to, yung parang friendly or parang antagonistic. Yung reaction ko naman dyan is actually quite simple. Yung ano kasi, yung feeling ko, yung movies like Terminator and so on, uh, they are essentially, again, ano, yung reaction of, ganito, look, Astro Boy, for instance. So, it was developed in the 1950s, right? Tapos na World War II. So, during that time, Japan was no longer, like, craving for imperialist, ano to, yung parang tendencies. Parang it was looking into the future in a totally different, ano na, outlook, di ba? And it, in fact, Japan thrived after World War II. Diba? They became like a world power na rin, economically. Oh. Oh, kasi ganun nga yung thinking nila. Kaya when, when concepts like Astro Boy was, ano, was created, yun nga, positive, very positive yung tingin nila what robots would be. Now, going back into the West, I mean, yung, yung root lang nga nung word, eh, diba? Robot. This is like a uh, Polish word uh, for like yeah. worker. Check. Oh, yeah, Ash- worker. Oh. It's a Czech word for like uh, worker. So worker siya. At alam mo naman in in a capitalist society in the West, workers are usually the ones being exploited. 'Di ba? I mean hanggang ngayon. <laughs> I mean look at Amazon kaya nga galit yung mga tao kay Jeff Bezos. Kasi yun nga, 'di ba? They, they, workers get exploited. So yung ano na to, yung mga movies like Terminator kasi this is like a reaction ng mga ano, ng mga writers to create a story wherein parang These workers are like seeking revenge. Yung parang ano, yung parang may fear din itong ano ngayon, yung mga yung mga owners of the technology. Uh, if we were to be more ano in the economic side of things, yung mga owners ng means of production. <laughs> yung ano, yung mga yun yung mga natatakot na baka mag-revolt yung mga machines that they are also exploiting. Parang ano yun, parang it's it's an expression of their fear. Kaya tuloy, in, in, in Western ano, uh, ano to, movies and fiction, ganun yung depiction ng mga robots na parang may ano talaga, may grudge right. against humanity. Kasi parang yun nga eh, kasi ganun nga yung exploitative yung nature ng system eh. So therefore, if, if robots suddenly be, have, kaya nga takot yung, actually may love-hate relationship yung West with AI. Di ba, tingnan mo, nagdi-disagree right. nga si Elon Musk and si uh, Mark Zuckerberg about how what AI is, whether it is malevolent or is it like uh, helpful. Kasi ganun eh, may love relationship siya kasi takot na takot yung, yung mga capitalist ng idea na if magkaroon niya ng sentience, I mean, Isaac Asimov, di ba? Yung iRobot, 
yung yung novel niya na pag magkaroon niya ng sentience as malaman niya na ino-oppress siya won't they like turn turn to uh, ano to yung mm-hmm. they might they might rebel against us they might attack us so yun eh yun, yun yung, yung yung i think that's the 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 demarcation line bakit magkaiba kasi yung Japan when it started to fool around with ro- with robotics iba na nga sila hindi na nga sila in that mindset na parang they're trying to conquer the world pero ganun pa rin eh ganun pa rin yung mindset ng ano eh ng ng west when it started to u- utilize robots na hala baka when when this guy has ano develops ai maging sentient ito baka biglang ano uh, atakihin tayo nito di ba or something like that mm-hmm. so yun that, that, that's all i can say about right. the matter na there's also a cultural there's also a believe it or not a spiritual aspect to this you know the west is largely informed by judeo christianism and to a certain extent, even today even the idea ng cartesian duality diba that a machine iba yung makina dun sa kaluluwa ang nagpapatakbo ng makina yeah. diba uh, which is why may uh, ano may naisip <laughs> the ghost in the shell ghost, ghost in the shell oh. so, pero looking at ghost in the shell no kaya mas nuanced yung portrayal niya because these are concepts that that Japan in specifically but also Southeast Asians have been have been, it's been part of our culture for the longest time. Pre-Hispanic mm. Philippines kunwari. Uh so the easiest way to describe our religiosity at the time but it is insufficient is to call it animist. To say animist, that that uh. but to say that pre-Hispanic culture is animist there are a lot it's a very broad generalization and it does it, it does not do justice to the nuances no that must have been there but it does help us understand that we our ancestors felt and it, it's true here even today you know that that uh we are not surprised or not uncomfortable with spirits being a part of our everyday lives but that explains going forward going to the present again from the past is things like Prese, for instance it's amazing to watch this this story about capres and manangas in an urban sprawl but in the back of our heads it makes sense in the sen- in in that it's not surprising but oh okay it's just uh, there's no large leap of uh, of imagination because yeah. we are in a culture that in which the spirit, it. spirits yeah spirits are accepted in this larger context yeah. japan going back to the concept of robots even before uh even before world war 2 kadan talaga yung mindset nila the, the 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 they have a large animism even the, the in sense buddhism nila is it, it, it uh, goes along those lines now you are used to to spirituality of everyday things diba so when you have a robot and then there is the quote unquote threat of it becoming sentient in this threatening because it, it's an idea that's not new to you compare that to the west where you know we have this cartesian duality now ano eh, na, there's this there's this leap of trying to understand uh and this fear of the unknown when this is again to your point the terminator when this uh when these uh machines become sentient what are they going to do should we be afraid of them but that's a question that has long been partially answered by japan and other countries in the east for the longest time kaya you know i really like that movie ito lang yung the only movie i know that is quite different. It's a Western movie, but it's the only one quite different from yung ibang Western offerings when it comes to robots. Eh. Are you familiar with Bicentennial Man? Oh yes, yes. Both the, uh, the movie, the movie and the no, the story itself. Yeah, ang ganda, eh, diba? I mean, uh, it approaches it from an uh, parang evolving siya, nagi evolve siya from that state na hindi mo pa nga alam whether he is like truly sentient or not or process thought processes lang yon until he develops emotions so maybe the the attempt there was to yun nga yung parang to hindi naman nullify or parang erase the cartesian uh, uh, concept of the ano yung parang may delineation talaga or what pero siguro 
yun nga, parang to allow people to see it in a different light. Na parang, uh, yung, when something develops AI, ano nga eh, yung, yung, yung benevolence that might come from it, baka mas makakatulong pa nga rather than be detrimental. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Baka yun yung message essentially ng, ano eh, ng, ng Bicentennial Man. Apart from, of course, yung parang, di ba, it's also like a movie about identity, yung parang finding identity. Kasi di ba, yung he just wanted to be acknowledged as a human being. Uh-oh. Which is, marami rin, nga rin ako nabasang criticism dyan eh, about Bicentennial Man naman na, hindi naman criticism, more of like anecdotal or parang ano lang, uh, additional uh, input na this may be a story about like this machine that developed a soul or like, uh, uh, you know, uh, was capable of emotion. Tapos maraming tao ang na, na ano, na parang nadadala sa story when in fact, there are real people out there who really exist na parang they have been stripped away of, of these things kasi baka these are like oppressed people and yet, hindi nga napapansin. May mga ganun eh, na I don't know if na-encounter mo yung mga ganun klaseng commentary usually from, you know, yung mga ano talaga sa social justice na talagang there are cultures in the world that are being trampled upon. It's funny that it's ironic na you feel like this feeling of pity in the situation of this character in a machine where in fact there are actual people, mga buhay na tao na they almost lack a soul in the sense na kasi siguro their surroundings have transformed to a point na wala na nga silang culture, stripped away na because of all the modernization going on around them. Parang yung tinatawag na nasasuck na dry, yung very nature nila. And ironic, di ba, na parang you would be expressing pity over this machine. Pero in the real world, ano nga, may mga situations wherein people are actually losing their identities, losing their soul. Kasi nga, ano nga, itong mga things going on around us na hindi natin makontrol or beyond our control. So, wala yatang gustong mag-join sa atin. <laughs> or baka inaantok na. Kasi medyo late na rin tayo nag-start, no? Uh, after dinner, yung iba baka natutulog na. Pero mukha namang may mga na-entertain. Kasi may, people have been sticking around, I think, to Thank our you discussion. Thank around. Yeah, thank you to those, ano. And, Ah, uh, hindi babasahin ko nga kasi baka mamaya may mga nagka-question tapos hindi ko lang nababasa eh. Yung nga may nag-question na ano no, yung about whether it is Dune, yun ba na Dune? Eh, are they are, are, were we referring to the Dune that they knew? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I Yeah, I, so I, nasa, I, yeah. Yan. Okay. Uh-huh. So yeah, uh, TJ, I hope na ano no, you found this as a good opportunity to express your thoughts and ideas about this matter because they're very interesting and I really hope that in the future we can do more and perhaps in an even more formal capacity na baka yung talagang ano, no, we get more people aboard and maybe uh, although wala akong credentials for it no, kaya nga I will tap people talaga na may, may mga credentials to do it na talagang set the stage for you to like do this in a more ano, no, yung parang formal capacity Yun nga, kaya nga, maybe I can get uh, in touch with my sister and then talk to you. Kasi, ano eh, napapag-usapan namin ito ng mga topics eh. So, she, and she does uh, make lectures to her journal class. Oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Are, are you, by the way, willing to visit MSU Marawi sa Marawi? <laughs> oh, yeah. If the opportunity arises, okay. why not? Oh, okay. Uh, so, yun. Uh, anyway, yun nga. Uh, what's this? Um, this uh, kind of subjects talaga sometimes need to be more out there. Talagang need to be further discussed. Kaya nga, even in a casual capacity like this, I'm trying to show people na pwede silang mag-participate kasi baka they have uh, ano to, yung unexpressed ideas na baka makakontribute into the pool. Mm-hmm. No? Kasi it, it, it is an ongoing conversation. It is a, any conversation ano to, it gets enriched with, with additional input. Di ba? Uh, ano nga ba yung ano, mantra sa science? Uh, uh, anything is the truth as long as wala pang additional data or something like that. Unless na ma over ano siya, ma counter siya ng newly available data, then it's it's the truth as we know it for now. Hmm. So ganon, may 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 synthesis synthesis talagang nagkakreate when you when you get more and more data and you you try to uh, uh, ano to assess and and make sense out of it all. So, yeah, we're going to the ano, top of the second hour. So, thank you very much, TJ, for your time. Thank you very uh, much for inviting time. me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope na talagang 
Kasi, uh, we can actually download this, I believe. Uh, once it gets archived, we can download it. And I can also share you the link. I'll, I'll upload it in my Google Drive for your reference later. Kasi I think we really touched on a lot of great things here na pwede din natin gawan ng parang chart and to explore other... Yes, yes. Ano, mar marami nga akong nakalimutan eh. Marami akong, <laughs> even though may outline ako, marami akong nakalimutan na gusto ko pa sana i-inject. Pero like, like uh, anything, talagang we have to schedule this kasi right, mayroon pa tayong right. ibang mga gawain. Pero masaya, masaya. Eh, because I I really like na we were like, ano, parang nag, na to, toe for toe tayo dito in, in this uh, discussion eh, and pointing these things out. And I really like na pag may naisip ako, parang na-anticipate mo agad ko ano yung nasa isip ko. <laughs> I really like that. Okay, I really enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Thank DJ. you very See, much. Po, Timothy Dimakali po. So I shared to you the links to his works and his thesis. So I hope you you get also yeah. enlightened I hope it, by I hope his it works. Yeah. You. yeah, and inspires dream big, you. Uh, yeah. Dream big, aim Good big. night. Good night, Philippine Astronomy Forum. We're bidding you goodbye. Thank you for Thank um, you know, so listening. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, TJ. Thank you too. Bye -bye. See you online. Bye -bye. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye.